Well, thank you for joining us again for another Way of Wisdom. And we're spending some time in Proverbs chapter 4. This is really a, an important passage of Scripture. And the core of it is found in verse 23. Maybe you'll even commit this verse to memory. But in verse 23, this is from the New King James. It says, uh, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Other translations say things like, Guard your heart. And I like that. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues of life. Like your heart is a spring that, of water that things will flow out of. And we're talking about the importance of guarding and keeping your heart. Now, out of an evil heart, Jesus said, Matthew 15, 17 through 20, all kinds of evil will come. And, and then uh, things of God come out of a, a good heart. Uh, love, for example, and, and wisdom and receiving the word. And, and a merry heart does good like medicine. I mean, uh, uh, the right condition of your heart can bless your life. The wrong condition of your heart can curse your life. Your life can be hard and bitter because of the condition of your heart, or it can do, do good like a medicine. A merry heart does good like a medicine. That's Proverbs 17, uh, 22. Where do you believe? You believe in your heart. If you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, the Bible says, and the soul, uh, soil rather, of the, of the Word of God needs to be the good soil uh, of your heart. Now this word in verse 23, guard or keep, it really means to do, do, uh, do, diligence to your heart. It's the Hebrew word, do diligence to your heart. It's the word natsar. It means guard, protect, or maintain. So you want to guard your heart. You want to protect your heart. But you, there's some things you need to maintain in your heart as well. There's some things you need to guard to keep out of your heart. But there's some other things you need to maintain in your heart. So it's not just guarding. You've got to also maintain the good things that are in your heart. Now, this isn't all out of this text, but uh, jumping off here from this text, guard your heart with all diligence, due diligence to guard your heart, uh, giving due diligence to guard your heart, keep your heart, protect your heart, but also maintain your heart. Let's start with a few of the things you need to keep out of your heart, to guard your heart from. I'll give you just a few scriptural references on each one. The first one, of course, is pride. Pride is always number one. Pride is what started this whole fall and falling away from God. Pride, ego, self. Notice what the scripture says. Proverbs 16, 5. Everyone proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Everyone proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Proverbs 18, 12. Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty. But, and before honor is humility. Haughtiness, that's a, a type of arrogancy and pride. That comes before destruction, but it's in the heart first. Proverbs 21, 4, a haughty look, a proud heart, and the plowing of the wicked are sin. Psalm 131, 1, not haughty in heart. See, it always begins in the heart. Everything begins as a seed in the heart and then grows. Well, if you can pull up that seed, if it's a bad seed when it's still just a seed, you're, you're better off. But once it starts growing, it's harder and harder to deal with. So right now we say, Lord, I want to be humble in heart. Don't let me be haughty in heart. That's what comes before destruction. Well, here's something I think is a tremendously danger, and that is hardness of heart. Hardness of heart. We, we harden our heart when we disobey the Lord or when we resist His voice. We also harden our heart when we choose to not forgive others. We harden our heart when we feel the pain of loving someone who's hurting us, and so we just harden our heart to try and numb the pain. And that's one of the worst things you can do, hardness of heart. Once your heart is hard, then you, you've cut yourself off from what God can be doing in your life. Proverbs 28, 14. Happy is the man that is always reverent, but he who hardens his heart will fall into calamity. He who hardens his heart will fall into calamity. Uh, it also says in verse uh, 1 of 29, Proverbs, He who is often rebuked and hardens his neck will suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. It was God is warning you, God is warning you, but you're resisting His warning, and then sudden destruction comes. The whole thing wasn't sudden. There was a whole process of you hardening your heart, but it seems to be sudden when the fall comes. So don't harden your heart. Here's what Proverbs 3.13 says, But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. How tender is your heart! The Bible speaks in Ephesians 4.32 about being tender-hearted. How soft is your heart to hear the voice of the Lord? How easily are you convicted? 
How, how tender is your conscience, which might be an indication of how soft your heart is. We must always endeavor to maintain a softness of heart so that God can deal with our heart. Once our heart is hard, we shut out God and we shut out the good things and we'll start shutting out others and life is a downward spiral. So today, if you've been wounded, forgive to keep your heart tender. You say, well, I, they don't deserve my forgiveness. I'm not even talking about them. The person hurts you, keep your, you keep forgiving if for no other reason, and there are other reasons, but if for no other reason to keep your heart tender. Why? Guard your heart with all diligence for out of it come the issues flow, spring, the issues of life. Oh, be Ephesians 4.32, tender-hearted. Here's another one, lust. Oh, this is a plague on our culture today, and even in the church, especially men are falling prey to lust, and, and, and the imagery and the sensuality of the world is bombarding us everywhere. But notice what it says in Proverbs 6.25, Do not lust after her beauty in your heart. Do not lust in your heart, nor let her allure you with her eyelids. See, it starts in the heart. Jesus said, if you lust for a woman in your heart, to commit adultery, that's like committing adultery already with her in your heart. That was Matthew 5.28. And it says, abstain from fleshly lusts that war against the soul. Peter 2.11. So let's let the Lord deal with the lust that would try and get into our heart. Well, how about bitterness and unforgiveness? We've already mentioned that. It can cut us off from the blessings of God. If we don't forgive from the heart, we're going to lose God's forgiveness. The Bible is very clear on that. Uh, don't let a root of bitterness spring up in your heart and thus defile many. Hebrews 12.15 talks about that root of bitterness. And Matthew 18.35, that whole parable being turned over to the taskmasters because he didn't forgive. So make sure that there's no bitterness or unforgiveness in your heart. The Bible speaks about doubt in your heart. Mark 11.23 and Hebrews 3.12. Uh, there can be fear in our heart. Uh, Psalm 27, 3 and 14. Or sin, iniquity in our heart. Psalm 66, 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Uh, Proverbs 17, 20 talks about a deceitful heart, finds no good. And Proverbs 12, 8, the perverse heart. But notice what it says, if I regard, and that word regard means you know about it, but you let it stay there, you maintain it there. No, you got to get rid of it. It'll, it'll destroy your prayer life. So let me ask you, are you guarding your heart? Well, what should I maintain? What good things should be in my heart that I maintain? We're going to talk about those next time. But let's talk about guarding our heart. Today, will you say, Jesus, I want you to first of all cleanse my heart, purify my heart, and then help me to maintain that purity of heart by focusing on your word. And the Bible says this in 1 John chapter 1. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of his son Jesus is cleansing us from all sin. You know what that's saying? If you live in fellowship with God and others, there's going to be a continual cleansing. And that cleansing includes your heart. Will you maintain a clean heart by guarding it against these things and others that you know about that we need to keep out of our heart but by allowing that continual work of the Spirit, applying the blood of Jesus to your heart ongoing. Let's pray. Lord, help us to have purity of heart. Help us to guard our heart from these things we discussed today, that we might have a good flow, that this, the issues of life will be good. And we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we welcome you today to our study of the way of wisdom. And today we'd like to finish up chapter 4, We've been talking for a few weeks now about guarding your heart, maintaining your heart. And today I want to talk about how to maintain and what should be maintained in our heart. And I believe you can maintain something by feeding it, by nourishing it. It's got to be in your heart to begin with, but then it has to be uh, not only guarded from other things creeping in there that we talked about that last way of wisdom. Guard your heart, keep out lust, keep out pride, uh, keep out unforgiveness, keep out doubt. But now we've got to maintain some things. And, and how do we maintain? We maintain by nourishing them. And we do that primarily through the Word of God, by keeping His Word ever before our eyes. Well, let's read this passage again. In verse 23, it says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth, and put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead, and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet, and let your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or the left. Remove your foot from evil. 
Well, we want to talk today about maintaining, because that word guard, it can also mean maintain. And as I said, we maintain primarily by nourishing. Well, what should we be maintaining in our heart? Number one, love, the love of God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. And that's Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, and, and that was what Jesus said was the greatest commandment, as well as loving your neighbors yourself. And that's Matthew 22, 37 and 40. The love of God comes into our heart by the Holy Spirit. When we're born again, read Romans chapter 5, the love of God is, is shed abroad in our hearts, and that passage is all about being justified, having peace because we're justified with God. Let's keep on having peace with God. And then the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit that He gives us when we're born again. So if we have that love and that, that sincere love that comes into our heart, 1 Peter 1, by the Word of God being, being grafted into our heart or planted into our heart. So there's love there. Are you nourishing love in your heart? We love Him because He first loved us. Are you spending time communing with Jesus, receiving His love, and expressing your love for Him? As you do that, you'll have more love in your heart to give to others. But you have to maintain that love. Don't let your love grow cold, as it will in many in the last days. Keep in the presence of the Lord to maintain that love. We need to maintain uprightness of heart. Psalms 7, 9 and 10 says, The righteous God tests the hearts and minds. My defense is of God who saves the upright in heart. Now, in my heart, I always want to do what is right. That should be our attitude. I, I really want to do what is right, and I want that to come from my heart. Uprightness of heart. Purity of heart. We've talked about that. Matthew 5, 8. Allowing the Spirit of God as we fellowship with Jesus and others, 1 John 1, 6 through 9, to cleanse us, to always be cleansing our heart. Proverbs 3, 5 talks about trusting the Lord with all your heart. Are you nourishing your trust, feeding yourself the Word of God so that you can maintain? And Ephesians 4, 32 talks about tenderheartedness. Are you keeping your heart soft by quickly repenting of anything that we do wrong or think wrong or comes into our heart? Be quick to repent. That's what keeps your heart soft and by spending time in the presence of the Lord. Have you dedicated time every single day just to be in the presence of the Lord? I'm not talking about just while you're driving to work and doing other things. I'm talking about dedicating some time where you're doing nothing else but being in the presence of the Lord. You know what? That'll keep your heart soft. By being in the prayer and praise and worship every single day, it has a tenderizing effect upon your heart of kneeling before God every day, not just while you're doing something else. I know we, we try to cram our devotions in while we're doing something else. That's not what I'm talking about. We've got to prioritize God and time alone with God for the sake of our heart, as well as to honor Him. How do you keep your heart soft? By being quick to repent, quick to forgive, by being in the presence of Jesus, by being a person of worship and prayer, keeping our heart so we must maintain these things and we maintain our heart by feeding it the word of god look at verse 20 my son give attention to my words incline your ear to my sayings do not let them depart from your eyes keep them in the midst of your heart see there it is again your heart keep them in the midst of your heart so will you maintain your heart today will you maybe cancel an appointment or change your schedule if you haven't already spent time alone with god Devoted, devoting that time only to God, not trying to do some other task at the same time. Will you do before the before the sun sets? Will you set aside some time and say, "Lord, my heart needs to be with you. I need time alone with you, nothing else going on, just you, because Lord, I need you to work in my heart. I need you to tenderize my heart. I want to love you more, Lord. I want to serve you more. I want more purity in my life. Will you do that today? Guard your heart and maintain your heart." for out of it flow the issues of life. Let's pray. Father, thank you for these teachings on the importance of our heart condition. I pray that each one of us will take heed and we will allow you to work in our hearts, to guard our hearts from the bad and to maintain and nourish the good. And we praise you for this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.